So let's dig into the first one, the most important one in many ways, content marketing, which is to engage and educate your customers. Now, you need to understand that you have to think about your business differently. You are not just in the business of floral products and floral distribution. You are also in the business of knowledge. You need to be the go-to resource for business building information. Now, there is a reason why customers choose to do business with you. And it's not just because you have the right products at the right price. It's because you have specialized knowledge about what products they should be working with, how they should be using them to be most effective. You are helpful in many, many ways during that interaction that you have with your customers on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything you do in the online world needs to be just as helpful. You need to understand that you cannot just be in the constant mode of selling, selling, selling. You need to be educating. What you want to do is turn your website into the go-to resource for business building information. Now this concept of content marketing, you may get it immediately, it may be somewhat fuzzy for you, you're not sure exactly how it applies for your company. I want you, if you want to get a good understanding of a content marketer in action, is to take a look at the site that's on the screen right now. This company is from a different industry, but I think that they're exhibiting these best practices perfectly. The company is Food Service Warehouse. I want everybody, when you get back to the office, back to your room, go take a look at Food Service Warehouse, because this is a perfect example of a content marketer in action. Now let's talk about the story of Food Service Warehouse. You know, they're a food service distributor. You know, they sell ovens, they sell plates, they sell glasses, different supplies to the food service industry. There may be thousands of food service distributors across the United States. Why has Food Service Warehouse created a unique differentiation for their company and they're rising above their competition? And it's because they have embraced this concept of content marketing. If I was a restaurant owner, I could go to Food Service Warehouse and buy all the supplies I would need, all the equipment that I would need. But that's not the only reason why I would want to visit there. They have an educational section that provides articles and videos and white papers that really would help me be more effective as a restaurant owner. I could go to the Food Service Warehouse site and learn how to start a restaurant, how to market a restaurant, how to hire employees for a restaurant, how to finance a restaurant, how to select real estate for a restaurant. Everything I would need to know to be a more effective, more profitable restaurant owner, who do you think I'm going to think of when it's time to buy my supplies? So think about how you could be that business building resource providing valuable educational content for your different customer segments. Now when I'm talking educational content, I'm talking about a number of different types of content. We need to basically pack our website with a number of different things. You know, first and foremost, a great way of getting started is by producing a blog. Putting educational blog posts on your site on a regular basis, encouraging people to comment and provide their feedback. It's a great way of starting providing valuable educational content into your site. Next, you can take that concept a bit further and start creating useful how-to articles that demonstrate a best practice, educate in some way. 500, 750 word articles, they do not have to be very lengthy to be valuable. Next, you could take that concept even further and create downloadable how-to guides. Same ideas as in the articles, but just in a lengthier format, more detail. Five to 20 pages available on your website as a downloadable PDF. You can even ask for a brief registration before people can access it. So you can generate leads and build a marketing database. Next, videos are fantastic content for your website. Short how-to videos that you can very easily film with inexpensive digital cameras. Your iPhone, you can film how-to videos. The key is that you're demonstrating a best practice that your customers will find valuable. Next, webinars. Web-based presentations that can be used for sales purposes, could be used for customer service purposes. These are web-based presentations people can watch from their computer. They either can be live, 
streamed over sites like GoToWebinar, uh, or they could be pre-recorded presentations available for download. And then finally, presentations themselves. Presentations are fantastic content. You can create very visual presentations that demonstrate that best practice, have them available on your website as a downloadable PDF, as well as publish them on a number of content sharing sites that are out there. So you need to be in the continual process of creating this valuable content and publishing it on your website so you can turn it into that resource center. Yep, very good question. The question was, does Food Service Warehouse sell this educational content or do they provide it for free on their website? It is completely for free. The question is, do I ever suggest selling educational content? And I would say that yes, if it's valuable enough for pe people to pay. And I'll give you an example of how I do it uh, myself for my own company. You can go to my website. There are videos. There are articles. There are downloadable how-to guides, all available for free. Articles and videos you can watch without doing anything. You can just go to the site. My how-to guides, I ask for your basic contact information just so that I can follow up and get your feedback. I also have a 120-page how-to guide that has all of my online marketing best practices detailed in a step-by-step -step format. I do charge for that manual because I'm providing enough value. But if you're going to be providing content and trying to sell it, you have to have a content upsell process. Articles are free. Anybody can read them. How-to guides, people need to give the basic contact information so they can become part of your marketing database. If it's that, if it's that valuable, you can then charge for that content. So I know some people are probably thinking here, I know what I'm going to do, I know what I'm going to write about, I know what I'm going to create. And then probably many others are thinking, Bob, you're nuts. You're out of your mind. How can I possibly create all this information? I am trying to run my business. There's no way I could keep up with this content creation process. And I want to tell you that there is a secret to keeping up with it. And it's the concept of repurposing. This is something I do myself. This is something that I encourage my clients to do. All you need to do is come up with one good idea a month, 12 ideas a year, and then you can create a number of different content types based on that one idea. And I'll give you an example from my own company. A number of years ago, search engine marketing became very, very important. Just as social media marketing is the buzz now, search engine marketing was the buzz then. But like social media marketing, people found it confusing. They weren't sure how they could put it to work to grow their business. So I knew there was a seven-step process for search engine marketing success. So I had this idea, and I decided I'm going to write an article. Seven steps to search engine marketing success in 800 words. It's on my website for people to read. I sent it out to associations so they can include it in their newsletters. I sent it out to some magazines that ran it. The article, people enjoyed it. People got value out of it. So I took that same article, that same idea, and created Seven Steps to Search Engine Marketing Success as a How-To Guide. 18-page guide, same seven steps, just much greater detail. You can go to my website now and download this for free. I just ask for basic contact information. So this is a way of building a marketing database, leveraging your content. Took that same idea, Seven Steps to Search Engine Marketing Success, I created a webinar, I do live presentations, I've created a number of different content types on the, based on this one idea. So don't think that the process of creating valuable content is going to be daunting. It doesn't have to be. You just need one good idea a month and you can create a number of different content types based on that idea. So how do you come up with ideas? Anyone in your company that has any type of customer exposure, they are candidates for coming up with those ideas. Ask them on a regular basis, what information would our customers find valuable, find actionable? What are the ideas that they're asking us about? What are the questions that they have on their minds? And then gather all of those ideas and pick from them which ones are the best ones that you, you should focus on and prioritize them. You're not sure? Your people don't know? Ask your customers. Ask your customers, what information could I provide to you that would help you in your business? What could I offer on my website that would make you want to visit it weekly because it's so valuable? 
If you ask your customers, they will give you ideas. And you could do this via an online survey. You could do this as just a reason for salespeople to call them. Look, we're trying to figure out how we can more effectively serve you. So what would you like to see? What could we provide on our website to provide that extra value? So any, any questions or comments regarding content marketing? Yes. Okay. The question is, if you're creating this content and you're putting it on your website, how do you leverage social media and other online marketing tools to target your best customer? We don't want just the general public coming to your site and downloading stuff. We want to get in front of our best customers. And there's a number of different ways that we're, we, you can do that. And I'm going to go into each one in greater detail, but I'll summarize it right now. First and foremost, search engine marketing is your most effective way of getting your customers to your website. There are certain terms that your best customers are searching on that members of the general public are not. Niche terms that are related to your product offering, niche terms related to your service offering. You want to make sure that you are bubbling up on that first page for those niche terms. Then you're getting your best customers to your site. From a social media marketing standpoint, what you want to do is share your information in a very targeted way. And I'll give you an example. LinkedIn is probably the most effective social network for business-to-business -business companies. What you can do once you start creating valuable content and putting it on your website, you can participate in LinkedIn groups. How many people participate in LinkedIn groups? OK, a few hands. Uh, let's say you're targeting meeting planners. Perform a search for meeting planners. You will find a bunch of LinkedIn groups that are basically for meeting planners, where they're sharing best practices. Participate in those groups. Start sharing out your articles. Start sharing out your guides. You will get them to your site to take advantage of it. So you need to do it in a very targeted way. And what you'll find is that you don't have as many mishits as you would think. The general public really is not looking for that information if you're focusing on that niche content. Yep? Sure, sure. The question is, how? Do, do I have hard data, or how can you test the opportunity that's out there? How do you know your customers are going online searching for what you have to offer? And I'm going to talk more about this in a couple of minutes, but one of the great things about search engine marketing is that before you do anything, you could take advantage of some research tools to figure out how many times people are searching on specific terms each month. And I popped in a bunch of niche terms related to your industry. And you will find, if you start popping in generic names of your products, specific brand names, you will see exactly how many times people are searching on those phrases per month. You could break it down by geographic area. So if you only serve a specific geographic area, you can break these tools down uh, based on that. So there's a number of ways that you can test the opportunity before you invest in anything. And that's the best tool, and I'll be talking about it in a little bit. Was there another hand? Yeah. Sure. The, the question is, how do you, as a company with a LinkedIn profile, how do you get accepted into LinkedIn groups? Because some LinkedIn groups do require an approval process before you get in. My, my first recommendation would be, don't set up a company profile on LinkedIn and try and get in. It needs to be a personal profile. And I would encourage as many people in your company to participate in it. And what you need to do in some cases when you're reaching out to these LinkedIn groups, uh, you need to explain to them why you want to join. And I am a member of a lot of meeting planner groups. The reason I'm a member of a lot of meeting planner groups, I'm a professional speaker. I'd like them to hire me to speak at their meetings. I needed to demonstrate to some of them, look, this is my participation in this group. You can see the types of posts that I'm putting there. They're all educational. They're all helping your members do something a little bit more effectively. I'm not going to be here selling. I'm only going to be educating. They're happy to have you in if you can demonstrate that that's what you're going to do.